Hey guys, Crypto Sniper coming back at you. Yes, so some interesting developments uh, have occurred. Um, I'm going to kick off with a chart that many people forget to keep an eye on. Um, and it was one that we felt uh, initially was going to go to the downside. Uh, and this was the BTC dominance. In other words, the percentage of total crypto market cap that is made up of Bitcoin's market cap. Okay, so that means if Bitcoin has virtually 100 billion goes up 5%, it picks up 5 billion, even if the others go up 2 or 3%, um, because of their collective scale being less, uh, the dominance of Bitcoin increases. Now, when we saw this structure initially, um, and we first had this quite steep sell off here, and then we had these sort of grinding moves up and steep sell off here. Um, we and we came to around about this point, and then we were moving down. We felt initially that that was probably going to lead to a downside move. It did start to move, but it went very, very slowly. Then had this big spiky volatile moment and turned around. That's right, it turned around. I've done the full draw of what we've actually got here um, for my premium guys. Um, but in actual fact, we even had what we call a little primer there. And since then, Bitcoin dominance has been going up. So when we're inaccurate, we often made money after initially being wrong and then going um, the opposite way. We did that in copper. We did that in oil um, when they had their big, big moves. Um, the market quickly shows you if it's not got real appetite for down and that was quite moderated and then it got quite sprightly squeezed and since then it's been trotting quite impulsively. In fact, we've got this running beyond 64% if it takes us to our natural target on Bitcoin dominance. That means when you go to and you refer to your crypto market cap and you can see you're sitting at about 97,000 uh, for Bitcoin. Um, it's only down 1.4%, but you can see 6, 8, 10, 9, 9, 8, tether is tether, uh, 8, 7, this is pretty dire. Uh, Monero at 5.5 is almost an outperformer for many alts. Clear it right down, um, clear it away um, and close that. How far do we go down the ratings? Look at that, 12.5, 14s. Fives is almost a good performance. Um, and then you have BAT, the first at 22, that's not gone down at least 5%. Uh, and is marginally up uh, on the day, right down at 22. Everything outside of uh, Bitcoin that's gone down about 1.5% is losing ground. So what does this do? This further emphasizes uh, the BTC dominance. So actually BTC dominance can increase in bear markets as BTC drifts off marginally and the others die. Um, and the other element that I've said is uh, a couple of my least favorites that I've said trade the short against. So be long the Bitcoin. If you're not sure on direction right now for the overall crypto markets, trade the uh, short. So let's just have a look at um, Ripple and we'll have a look at Ripple BTC. So we put, put this one out there a long time ago. This is a big time frame. It's a daily for many crypto uh, traders. That's an absolute eon. Well, uh, quite a long, long time ago, we said uh, this is going to be a good short to hold you will go long Bitcoin and you'll be short XRP and you'll have this convex move. Now around about here after the spike when it was bleeding out the whole spike, this, this is attempts to hold attempts to hold value when in actual fact there's bleed out selling. Now we find out the CTO has been market making aka distributing his ripple, which basically means every now and then he throws a hundred grand at pumping it, hoping to get FOMO buyers in and then sells into the spike as much as he can. That's what I personally assess uh, out of that uh, article. You should check it out for yourself. Um, CTO of uh, Ripple, according to some deal with his wife. I don't know why that it was an incredible story, um, but basically it sounds very much like the Enron director 
just trying to get everybody else to buy while distributing their mega hold. Remember, these are guys that at one point, you know, 79% of the value was held in 100 wallets that are these guys. So this is not a coin that I trust on value. People can say, yeah, it's fast and it works. It does what it says, but it's got a very, very small float. Um, probably only Lumen's worse, which is a similar type coin um, in terms of pre-mine. Anyway, so Ripple against the USD. Uh, let's do that as well. So you can see how in Bitcoin it's just not got away. It's had none of the upside uh, against Bitcoin and all of the downside. Also against the dollar, whilst crypto has genuinely been strong, we've done a lot of draws on this inside our community as well. Um, you can see the, how I highlight that line. And any move up is quickly sold back down. So this 32 over here, wow, you know, that's where he's been doing his market making, throwing a bit of cash maybe at that. By the way, I don't really know. I'm just speculating. Um, and now you're seeing it giving up that ground again. That doesn't mean it's going to go in and capitulate. I'm sure they back off their selling when they're at uh, approaching these key levels of significance like the 30. Uh, hoping for it to drift up on the general crypto feel good and then dumping it into that. The fact that it's um, usable and fairly quick doesn't mean it has to go except if, uh, unless usability is pushed. Uh, and there's lots of interesting things about paying corporates to use it. All these partnerships they announced, they're actually handing out coins. A lot of those partners um, um, are maybe lukewarm committed and dumping the coins while they still have some value. Um, so it smells of a bit disorderly market for valuation. When I jokingly say it's smelling or it might die, I'm not talking about die as it'll absolutely disappear entirely. Uh, I'm just being a little bit provocative. Um, but it's certainly in terms of valuation as a trade, it's a short term, very big uh, selling across the highs coming across here on Ripple and battling to get away very far. So this is in, even in, a, in what has been a resurgent short term bull market. Um, we don't know if we're going back to full blown bull just yet for sure. You've uh, it's just very unimpressive performance. So you can be crypto neutral Bitcoin long against uh, this one. And this would have stumped up loads of Bitcoin um, from the chart I showed you previously there um, with that convexity. So you would have you could have ridden this from nine even earlier when we first mentioned it possibly as high as tens right down to fives so that means you know you short uh, 10 bitcoins worth uh, of it you you hold five bitcoin in profit already uh, short 100 you have 50 um, so it's quite a fall um, anyway what else can we talk to you about um, we spoke of crypto dominance we spoke uh, of how I will see that going up this could see uh, two things. It could see Bitcoin goes up more and the alts are flatlining or drifting only moderately. Um, Bitcoin's percentage growth is higher or they all go up roughly the same. But because Bitcoin is 100 billion, three or four percent on Bitcoin going up over the course of a couple of weeks is a lot bigger number than on these lesser market caps. Or it's a, a, a retracement slightly where it's moderate for Bitcoin. So let's get the Bitcoin chart up. We actually uh, called out um, the possibility. You know, we had our first uh, upside HVF squeeze in the new trend, which gave us the 5K target. Since the 5K target, the rate of increase has slowed down immensely. So this structure gave us the key level of significance across there at 5K. So that was a key level. That was the best part of your move, fast moving breakouts. There was small little fractals that gave a pop and then gave you that high as well, which wasn't a bad move either uh, on the, those time frames. But let's drop it down a little bit shorter time frames and see how we uh, gone since. This did have or started to have a little bit of a rising wedge type structure, but it also had an, kind of an ascending upside HVF structure, which still could make a target. The implied target of that is 5,800. Our members have seen our draw on that. Um, and that's in our premium area. That said, that said, you've not made your second interim and this is quite volatile, <coughs> excuse me, and quite nasty selling candles. Quite nasty. The volatility has gone up. It was drifting, but we were seeing some resistance here. Then the spinning tops, which was a drift and then a little bit of spank. You can see these attempts that are failing, not drawing very nicely. Let's uh, go a thinner pen, shall we? Um, so there was clear resistance at the five, seven, 
uh, coming across here there that was a deep sell candle and there's been a little bit of follow through I wouldn't say it's <coughs> a mad panic it's a horrific in fact this was significantly more volatile and worse <coughs> excuse me and after that sell-off there was no follow-through and in fact we can continue to grind back up in these channels you had a little inverted bar that took you back into the channel range you squared up a little bit there and then you broke out um, so actually the Bitcoin charts not doing too badly after this mega pump it's not absolutely blindly running um, and it did get its little warning uh, slap in the face there but there was no follow through and it's drifted up and continued to make new highs. So for now, it's OK. For now, it's OK. I don't think there's um, there's a major threat, but I don't think there's going to be unbelievable performance. You've got to bear in mind the 6000 level was the period uh, far from the straightest line you've ever seen was the period where our, uh, we called short, where most people were calling the bottoms. Um, and it then broke down to three to that target of 3,700 and a little bit further to the downside trading eventually to the lows of 3.2. So it is coming up to an area where there is real heavy previous key levels of significance. So it might be worth reminding everybody um, of that and we'll take you back up to a higher time frame for that purpose um, so first of all there was a little continuation here this is off uh, Bitfinex as I say um, there's other you can look at the Binance as well there was a little continuation there that's given us the five six as well as a key area so you're running into key levels that you've seen uh, before and you've had one two selling wicks in there let's reduce that pen size again um, rub that off uh, and then you have the bigger down the bigger threat that was uh, the downside break so let's just redraw those uh, a little bit more finely so here we go that was i remember that little continuation it was at our uh one of our interims of and this level here is an interesting level so it might need to take a rest and this is why we talk about key levels of significance in here it's fell short of the, the seven and it's had a little bit of a pushback on those wicks you can see them and then of course this whole structure And for some that have just drawn a general grind line through there, or even if you just take a level where there was regular meets, you got from the 6,200, 6,100 and 6,000 level, you were getting regular points of support, a block of support there, a block of support, a block of support, which eventually fell. So these levels are where you will start to find your next period of resistance. So it's coming into some not so long ago history that's going to lean heavy. So it wouldn't surprise me if we get a couple of smackdown events. This could pull down maybe a little bit further. And then it needs some form of a wind up process to build some momentum again for Bitcoin to get back above 5,600 and then there'll be a pause it might get into this range but I doubt it will break it in one fine go uh, and then it's going to be quite choppy clearing above this when it finally does which I'd say you start to be in the clear through the 6.6 I would expect it to be with high momentum but it's got a lot of work and there's going to be a lot of gestation all those that are the headlines that say uh, you know Bitcoins expect everything to resume and the bull market, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be slow progress now. This is slow progress. This, just, this is like bringing, pulling the wagon back down the road. Only now it's getting into a mountain and a muddy hill uh, that has to be cleared. But eventually when it starts to blast through it and it's got that final clear the hurdle strength near the end, it'll come potentially out with some momentum and then we'll revisit and rest on that level that it's covered. Um, but this zone... There's two parts to it. There's a little bit of empty space in here. So let's draw it one more time. There's uh, two parts to it. These are going to be resistance. So here, one seam of hard rock to be drilled through. And roughly around here, 
which but this will start a little earlier it'll already start getting tricky from here so there's a there's a little bit of open territory once we get past the five uh, seven and the six thousand that we could cover with some momentum which will be a nice three hundred dollar move and then we'll start running into the sixes and that's where it's going to be a bit sticky so again i would expect pushback assuming that this continues and so far um it's not doing too bad uh in terms of that but for now that candle for a daily candle if bearing in mind the day is still young um, but is showing some degree of tiredness and last time we got that kind of tiredness you took a rest you took rest you took rest potential uh, chance to take rest and what's going to happen during that period bitcoin moderately off one percent one and a half to most of them particularly ethereum is the other one that is in a nasty structure against Bitcoin. So I don't like the two other big market caps. I think personally, when it comes to Ripple, you know, you've got a bit of a fake market here. The bulk of the market cap that's involved in this 12,649 has been held by too few people. So it's kind of like I have a family company um, and I keep 95% of the shares and then I release 5% into the open markets for people to trade and I show up that and bid that 5% to the moon. I make theoretically my 95% worth a small fortune. Um, with the cash I raised in the listing in my IPO or my ICO and etc etc so those are all paper values if there's no one to buy it up when you decide to sell that 95% just by moving a little bit of it you're going to crash that market and this is the dilemma the greed dilemma that the theoretical valuation uh, let's try two E's for greed Francis greed dilemma uh, that these guys that do such big um, pre-mines have they probably have some agreements between them at what rate they'll unload and they're all hoping for happy days bull they never got out of enough of it when they were being lauded as the new billionaires and they still maybe had some lockups in place now now they're going to be underperformers so i'm not impressed by them the platform the platform coins i don't feel are, go are going to do that well either particularly the older ones like uh, ethereum so if we look at this technically so the number two and number three are going to and when you add those two together that's 29 billion currently call it 30 to bitcoin's 100 billion so those two are going to probably do less well than bitcoin that's my hypothesis and continue to do less well than bitcoin this is going to drive the bitcoin dominance and the platform guys are going to battle a little bit you've seen eos has even come down really harder than even ethereum now um, as well so overall i'm not a big fan of the platform coins um, I actually think the ones that are close to Bitcoin in time will start to do slightly better. Um, so uh, maybe it'll be a time for uh, Bitcoin, ABC, Litecoin, etc. Um, but initially you want to be uh, the safest place is Bitcoin and in Tether uh, or cash, fiat. Um, but the best thing is Bitcoin versus one of the weeks and the weak ones. And Ethereum is also an alternative, not as bad as Ripple. So let's have a look at Ethereum on the chart. Um, the coin I want to show, the, the view we'll share with you is Ethereum against BTC. Um, and again, you'll see that this is not good structure um, for this particular coin. Um, so if we're looking at Ethereum BTC... Essentially, you are getting a squeeze and you have resolved to the downside. You have resolved to the downside. And what that will mean is possibly some little rally in between uh, the sharpness of the move. Uh, it's clear. Um, so you've had a squeeze um, and now you're going to resolve to the downside. You might get a little bit of a return move rally, but this could push lower. Just because you've seen that doesn't mean it can't be taken out and go lower. And this has been a low volatility period. And as it started to get to the business end, it started to thrash around, which is a sign of weakness. 
but there was still a constriction within that and you broke into the downside. Plus, we've got BTC dominance got uh, going to 64%. That means it's going to underperform too. If you're a big fan of Ripple and you want to short um, something else against BTC, you can go Ethereum. Personally, um, because Ripple has already done a lot and is at, uh, trying to hang on to its dollar support peg, uh, I say peg with some speculation um, you might get more juice here uh, for a while but both of these are going to underperform so your two your number two and number three uh, I would expect this percentage to consistently be under on that after we've seen the move and the direction the BTC dominance is going to take um, and the other platform coins particularly okay um, so that's it for your crypto update a uh, couple of thoughts for you and uh, remember if you want to find out more about trading crypto with us pop over to the website themarketsniper.com and you can have a chat with one of our crypto traders and traders of all markets for that matter that was where you were maybe two years ago and has since made the move towards being a lifestyle trader trading hvf method okay thanks for watching and enjoy share and like and ring the bell bye for now